bit. CRP. See. A little bit. How many more loads? One more. Three. Three pounds full. So here's some conservation in action. We got three seed boxes on this drill and I'm going through some dead sod here. Uh, barely cutting through and I'm gonna get that seed about an eighth of an inch deep roughly. Some of it, a little bit's on the surface but it's all cut through. And uh, we got a fluffy seed box redoing the CRP and this will um, be some real, real tall cover. And then uh, be really good for the soil, make some money at the same time. Here's the uh, here's the drill, it gets a little noisy, but drilling it. Got a 12 foot, 15 foot, and this is a 10. This one's gonna take a while. Three boxes on there. Talk about the benefits of CRP real quick. So this is stuff I've re-enrolled. I actually killed the um, the cool seasons out of here uh, last fall, and there's some warm seasons in here, which you can see they're pretty sparse. This actually is pretty thick. Um, but we got the cool seasons out. Really, stuff like brome and your cool seasons really don't have a place other than in waterways. When you're looking for wildlife, they are good for erosion control. I like them in waterways, but that's about it. So. Right here, we're putting a mix um, of about four different native grasses, maybe five, and then about five or six different legumes or forbs. And we'll, we'll change this a little bit based on soil type, but with CRP, you definitely gotta meet some program standards. And I make my own mix that they approve, um, which is good for Iowa and good for down here. So I get paid. Uh, to have these native grasses on the ground. It stops erosion, it protects the soil, uh, it creates a lot of deer habitat and a lot of pheasant, quail, stuff like that. Uh, like I said, it's an armor on the soil. And, and the other thing is, is as this uh, big native grass stand uh, comes and goes for years and years, it's actually gonna build up some organic matter. So these tops uh, are really low on organic matter in a lot of these areas and I'll probably manage this more with herbicides, but that's gonna build build some topsoil and put some organic matter back in the soil. Um, it's gonna bring the, the soil ecology back, everything from microbes to earthworms to all sorts of that stuff. It's really gonna benefit there. So, um, and that's just naming a few. So, uh, really tall cover, great for wildlife, stops the erosion, builds the soil, you get paid. Um, the benefits are really just countless, but there's a few reasons to do native grasses and I can get into more on which types you do and what situations. Diversity is definitely a good thing to have uh, and we can get into that in more depth on Iowa Whitetail. And you know, next thing we're going to be dealing with is herbicide control and herbicide control on different, different types of seedings, which we can address later. But this is a start and this brome right here and kind of poor quality native grasses is going to be some real, real tall stuff, real thick with a lot of diversity in it in about a year or two. This is uh, end of the day, I'm drilling that and here's kind of the end product. This is from the tractor window, but this is three or four years old and this stand is, I bet those seed heads are seven or eight feet tall. So here's a little view from the tractor and here's uh, the final product. And yeah, I say seven or eight feet tall if you reach up to these seed heads. This is what we want the, the rest to turn into. Whoops. I do like these challengers, 34 miles an hour, pretty handy. Now you go to bed, I'll get all this planting done. Check back later. I gotta work all night.